Hey guys, it's Friday and it's another day for Jordan P. Peterson reaction. Um, so if you can see my screen, I will try to react to the personality and transformation series from the Jordan P. Peterson clips um, YouTube channel. And today we are going to react to what predicts academic ability. Yeah, and it's Friday, it's after work, so hence the little casual outfit. And uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's look at this. If you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you almost have the opposite profile as a soldier. You're very high in openness and you're lower in conscientiousness, or at least conscientiousness is irrelevant. And the reason for that seems to be that, like, if you're an orderly person and you like to follow procedures and rules, it's kind of hard for you to start a company because when you first start a company or engage in any other creative process, because entrepreneurs turn out to be the same as artists, you kind of have to, you're not operating within a rule governed structure. In fact, there may be many times where you have to break a small rule to to move properly at a higher level of analysis. There's, there's no algorithmic way of generating a new company, right? Obviously. And so it's people who are very high in openness who happen to be good entrepreneurs. And so this is something I thought was extraordinarily cool because we'd, we'd also already known what predicts managerial, administrative, and academic ability. And IQ is crucial for any complex job, so we'll just leave that behind. But what predicts academic ability, for example, at the University of Toronto, is in intelligence, obviously, but also conscientiousness. The correlation between creativity mm. and grades at the U of T is zero. Zero. Right. Wow. But it's not, it's not surprising. The, th the thing is, you know, it's easy to be cynical about that, but one of the things you have to understand about creative people is that they, they continually step outside of the domain of evaluation structures. Right? Because if you're going to say you're going to yeah. evaluate um, the performance of 100 professors on their lecturing ability, well, you kind of have to measure what's common across all the professors in order to come up with the standards for evaluation. Well, that means you're not going to be able to use that structure to evaluate a particularly creative professor because he or she is going to do something in a way that's so different that it won't show up on the evaluation measure. And of course, that's what happens in universities, you know. Oh, okay. Um, somebody sent me, a couple of days ago, somebody sent me an essay that they had written for their master's thesis that was wildly creative and they were basically told to leave the program and, and that they couldn't continue. Not in the mean way, they, what happened was that what they were thinking was so outside of the conventions in the discipline is that no one had any idea what to do with the essay. So then that's really the lot of creative people. Yeah, and this is, this is also, um, if you think about it, this is also very, yeah, it, it's like putting, really putting or being on the brakes when it comes to, um, yeah, innovation, I think. Because um, if you look at academia, these, these are categories and disciplines and they are like hundreds or even, yeah, hundreds, easily hundreds of, hundreds of years old and uh, with a huge tradition and stuff like this. So um, to be creative and to expand would be a good idea in this way, yeah. All right, they're always stepping outside of evaluation structures, and so it's not that surprising that the relationship between creativity and grades at the U of T is zero. We found out as well, by looking at graduate student performance across multiple institutions, that there was a negative correlation between creativity and graduate school performance. Ooh. It wasn't even zero, it was worse than negative. Being creative was negative. And you think, well, yeah, um, sorry, just <laughs> quick comment on that. I mean, if you if you look at the nature in universities, especially, um, I mean, I've, I've went through university a um, few years, I mean, a bachelor's and a master's degree. Um, but in the end of the day, um, what made us to get uh, to get good grades is to be very focused and to put in hours in learning and working and learning and working um, on those topics, and especially if you want to combine it with some practical experience. Um, so to be creative, to have, to be very curious about many, many, many things is actually blocking you because you are just like, oh, well, this is interesting. But um, once, once it gets painful when it comes to learning, 
um, you switch the topics because then it's not so interesting anymore and something else just really grabs your attention and then you dive into that. So um, as a creative mind, and I think I at least have a little bit of creativity, um, it is very, very difficult to succeed unless you have a high amount of self-discipline to really narrow in your focus. That could make you cynical as well, but but you, you can't be cynical in that way because one of the things that happens in science is that science tends to progress incrementally rather than in great leaps. Now and then mm. someone comes along who blows the structure out of a science and advances it ridiculously. Yeah, and this is also a difference between academia and industry um, and innovation in the industries because in industry nobody is really interested in innovation which goes incrementally. This is just called growth or, or yeah, growth expansion. Um, but when it comes to innovation, what you really want to have looking from a company perspective, you want to have a disruptive um, innovation because disruptive means you are changing the game and in the moment you are changing the game you define the rules which makes you instantly at the top of the hierarchy makes you be in the position to charge any price you like and to make the big profits um, so in academia it's um, it's quite a little bit yeah it's it's quite the opposite as uh, Jordan Peterson is, is mentioning it. it's like you first of all it's it's very strict because you have to look at the literature and be really really careful um, that you quote the right sources so that you can just add a tiny 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 amount of new knowledge in a in in a, in a domain and um, so there's for for real real disruptive stuff um, it's extremely difficult and very, very, very seldom that somebody is really bringing something up which is disrupting um, the, the, the sciences, so to say. Uh, one, one example in the future may could be something if, if we discover physics for um, yeah, s speed faster than light, something like this. So then we have to reinvent physics, basically. So this would be something disruptive. But um, yeah, let's continue ridiculously like Einstein, but like most Here people aren't Einstein, and maybe thank God for that. Most of the time, you're in a discipline, you, you understand the discipline, and then once you've developed understanding of the discipline, you know what the next micro question is that should be answered. Yeah, exactly. And part of the reason that science is so powerful is because it allows people who aren't genius level creatives to make real advances in the generation of knowledge, one tiny micro step at a time. It doesn't matter if there's 100,000 people doing it and each of them is making a micro step, man. We're zipping along as fast as we possibly want to zip along. True. And so it turns out to be conscientiousness that's the excellent predictor of graduate student performance. That's the best predictor for law. It's the best predictor for managerial positions. It's the best predictor for administrative positions. Anything that has a structure of rules that needs to be applied, conscientiousness is a great predictor. So, but it's not good for predicting artistic ability or entrepreneurial ability. And that's also really important because one of the things, this is partly why bureaucracies stultify, right? Because what happens is they, as they develop, they get chock full of conscientious. Yeah, well, one thing I really want to, want to mention here is like, um, if, you, if you listen to John B. Peterson, you might get the idea that, well, if you want to succeed in academia, you have to be con conscientious, otherwise it's not possible. Um, and the other way around, um, if you want to be an entrepreneur and, I don't know, yeah, found a new business and to disrupt the industry, you have to be in creative mind. And um, looking at this statement, I would not sign it this way. Since um, looking at the entrepreneurial career, of course, yeah, you have to be creative. You have to think um, in different ways. But at the same time, I mean, you start as a one-man show. So you have to be the guy who's putting out, putting in the hours, um, and 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 having those routines, having a plan. Um, so it, you have to have like a good mixture. And I think um, a better way to put it is, um, if you want to be successful in academia, the the con con conscient, oh, sorry guys, conscience. Man, what's wrong today? I don't know. You know what I mean. This is basically, this personality trait is the canvas you are drawing on. Um, it's like, 
you this is a, a, a base but it's enriched by different elements and if you look at um at the entrepreneurial career it's a little bit different here i think the openness is uh, really the canvas um you're drawing on um you're starting at, at at this and then you add little parts so at the end of the day it's a mixture as probably always so but i'm talking too much let's continue just people with a few psychopaths thrown in there just for good measure they get chock full of of conscientious people busily zooming efficiently down a single track and then all of a sudden the landscape shifts and they're going very very efficiently in exactly the wrong direction and then the whole bloody thing falls apart so you need to have some creative wing nuts in your organization to come up with completely absurd ideas that might just on the off chance be true and so creativity is strange in that manner too because it's a high risk high return game you're a lot mm. safer in your life to find a functioning entity and to operate as a cog within it as long as the entity keeps functioning because if you're creative and you go off on tangents all the time there's some probability that one of those tangents is going to be exactly what is needed at the time and you're going to become hyper successful as a consequence but there's much more probability that even though your some of your ideas might be highly valuable the probability that this is the right time and place for them is extraordinarily low so to produce a successful creative product for example in the marketplace you need a ridiculous combination of creativity so that you keep generating uh, ideas here we go, the combination. and then a, a network around you of people who have skills that you don't and then the production of a of a a product let's say whatever that happens to be that's actually in demand by the marketplace at exactly that yeah. moment and that someone else hasn't already done better so the the sensible thing to tell anybody who wants to be creative is that's stupid you shouldn't do it it's it's <laughs> your probability of success is so low that it's better just to do something sensible but the problem with that is that creative people can't do that because mm -hmm. they're creative and if they shut down their creativity it's like an extrovert who's gone to live in a you know in an isolated cell a creative person who isn't being creative they just they just wither and die so they're stuck with it so but it is a high risk high return strategy yeah this was um what predicts acad uh, academic abilities so um yeah i uh, looking back at this video it is yeah, it, I think it, it does a good job giving you an, an certain insight in um, especially uh, what it takes to, to, yeah, to, to be good in academia, um, conscientiousness. So I think I, I, I pronounced it correctly. Um, conscientiousness, so this is the way. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think he did also a good job comparing it with um, entrepreneurial. Um, entrepreneurial careers and uh, openness you need for that um, but at the end of the day um, I think the combination is, 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 is the key and it doesn't matter um, at least probably in the first stages is if the combination um, appears in yourself so that you you are kind of a mixture or that you are later in the stages um, or maybe also at the beginning surround yourself with the people who have those abilities but then there's a different um, like a different difficulty coming in um, and this is like managing people managing those guys and girls since if you are in con if you are a very straightforward guy um, and then you have a creative mind out there um, who's constantly bouncing around and questioning your ideas and, 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 and thinks this is better than that is better. Uh, probably this, uh, it would be a very difficult situation in the team. Um, so yeah, difficult, but that's it. <laughs> Let's see you next Friday.